I know this is a stupid question, but how do you stop yourself from overextending? Okay, that's actually not a stupid question. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> oh my god, we're, we're gonna ignore the we're gonna ignore the dunk banner. How do you stop yourself from overextending? You have to understand what your role is in a team comp. If you're a ranged, here, here, here's the beginning of positioning. Pay attention to where your tank is. If you're the tank, you should be between the enemy team and your team. You should just be between them. You only go in if you're initiating on a pick. If you're not initiating on a pick, you don't go in. You just sort of walk back and forth zoning for your team. If you're a ranged damage dealer, you should be behind your tank and you only go in if your tank goes in. If your tank backs up, you back up. If you're a healer, you should, you have this problem of, you have a triage problem. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a melee hero or a ranged healer, it doesn't matter. Healing, healer positioning is always basically the same. You stay behind your tank and you stay near to whoever's likely to get bursted out um, and needs to be saved. So in some compositions, that's the bruiser. Like if you're supporting a thrall, he's very easy to, easy to burst down. Um, if you're supporting an illidan and he goes in, you gotta stay in range to heal the illidan. But like if you're Rhaegar, you gotta stay in range to ancestral. Uh, but you stay as close to behind your tank as possible while doing that. So it, it's just it's all based on the relative positioning of everyone on your team and everyone on their team. And here's a really easy way: if you're reviewing your own replays, here's how to tell if you're overextended. Every time you die, you were overextended. Every time you die, you're overextended. So when you're going back and watching your replays, look at your positioning and be like, okay, I died here. Where could I have, what, what decision could I have made differently in the last 10 seconds that would have put me in a position where I was not extended into this death? Systems online. 10 seconds. And if you do that consistently, you'll start to notice like really consistent trends. And then you'll, and this is this is what will start to happen. You'll notice situations where you did the exact same thing and one time you lived and one time you didn't. And when that happens, I want you to go look at the enemy team's cooldowns and realize that their cooldowns had been used when you lived and their cooldowns were available and they used them on you when you died. In general, the primary thing you're looking at is uh, crowd control. So if you're an Illidan and you saw the enemy team blow every single stun in their kit, well, now you can go in. If you're an Illidan and no stuns have been burned yet, you just kind of wait around. And you wait. You wait. Stuns used, go in. Um, in Illidan's case, uh, the, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people using uh, Q as an initiation. You should initiate with W and save Q as your escape in a lot of cases. Um... Especially once, you know, post-war when you find your friend or foe in teamfights. That's a big Illidan tip. Specifically. What about melee assassins? Melee assassins, in general, um, fall into three different categories. They are, and they all have to do with flanking. Uh, there's ambushers, so that you wait for people to overextend. Um, Butcher is a good example of an ambusher. You just wait for someone to overextend, and then boom, you're on them, and then they're, they're dead. Um, you have advancers. I call him like Illidan. Illidan doesn't really go around for flanks. He just like walks into the front of the enemy team and he does things. And then you have the anti flankers. And anti flankers tend to have CC but low mobility. Like Zul is a really good anti flanker. If you're playing Zul, you kind of wait in on the edge. Uh, so if your tank's like, if your tank's like, let's say your tank's here. Let's say we're, we're in this lane right here. My tank is here. My tank is zoning this entire area. And I see someone be like, I'm going to be sneaky and come around down here. I'm Zul. I'm waiting right here. My tank can't zone this area because he's over here. Right? And then suddenly someone comes in from the flank and I'm Zul and I, I deny the flank. So if you're a low mobility melee hero who is not a tank, deny flanks. If you're a high mobility melee hero who can get in and out of fights advance directly through their front line and try and put pressure on their back line and then escape. If you're a... But only do that when your tank is pressuring their front line. Don't just, like, dive. You need to be... You know, you need to wait for your tank to start a fight. 
Um, and if you're an ambusher, you just wait in bushes and wait for someone to overextend. Those are the three major categories of melee assassins. I'm actually stealing that from a guide I wrote that is not yet published, but will be soon. For the record, um, I have more than 10 guides that are like 90% finished. And due to everything that's been going on in my personal life, I haven't put the finishing touches on them and then sent them to Boo to be edited. <laughs> so uh, all of those guides will be coming out on the Gale Force Esports website very, very soon. But the, they're, they're not there yet. 